Hands on with the Nintendo Switch. Moments after Nintendo of America President Reggie Phil Same finished his presentation, another exec took the stage to announce how things will go. The room is separated into sections. Each section of attendees will follow a staff member, with a Mario character, on a black card. And just like that, we're each ushered off to a game some semblance of organization. We're each ushered off to a game some semblance of organization, before it all invariably erupts into chaos. It's inevitable, of course. A few minutes later, members of the press are screaming at screens, and elbowing their way, into be among the first to play the new Zelda game, on the upcoming console. It's inevitable, of course. A few minutes later, members of the press are screaming at screens, and elbowing their way, into be among the first to play the new Zelda game, on the upcoming console. Last night's unveiling was all news pricing, availability, specs. Today's event is about actually experiencing the thing. Being one of the first to try the strange new console, in all its strange, convertible forms, there are games stationed around the space, laid out into rooms of a Manhattan loft, from proprietary titles, like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and the aforementioned Zelda title. Breath of the Wild which had its gameplay debut for the Wii U back in June 83 to perennial third-party favorites, like Street Fighter 2 and Arms, a slightly more family-friendly take on the classic fighting game. Most of the stations are just basic TV, and the living room settings, but there are a few more creative takes, as well like a fake airplane interior, complete with animated clouds, a cross-section of a VW bus, and a small, Vogue greasy spoon, called the M Dinner, and run by some Italian plumber. There are Nintendo reps waiting at each of the station's standard practice, for gaming demos, though in many cases these games require more than the standard explanation. Even games, like Street Fighter, which most in the room can likely play blindfolded, require a quick preface regarding precisely how the title is played. After all, the Switch is Nintendo's great new gamble and everything and that kitchen sink console designed to learn from the mistakes of the Wii U, while bringing together positive lessons from both it and its predecessors. The result is a system that can be played, as both a sit-down living room console, or a portable, if slightly unwieldy system, it's an impressive bit of diversity on display. But it also means that the majority of gamers of different skill levels will inevitably require some hand-holding, as it's not immediately clear which game takes advantage of which technology. And from the sound of Nintendo's Blue Sky plans for the system, there's still a heck of a lot of potential yet to be unlocked with the titles. The 10 or so games on display at today's event certainly showcase some of that versatility. But as Phil Same noted in his brief, and largely reiterative address ahead of the event, there are some 50 developers currently working on the platform, with 80 titles in the pipe. The Switch may have something of a title problem, when it launches in a month, and a half, but if all goes according to plan, the issue should be addressed fairly soon hopefully in the lead up to next holiday season. Unsurprisingly, one of the best displays of the tech is one of the newest titles arms, a brightly colored, cartoonish take on the classic fighting game. The player slips the two joysons off the side of the console and holds each in a hand, a la the Wiimote. The game plays out on a split screen, each from the first person point of view of the player. As with the Wiimote, the player uses the joysons to punch. It was fun and a bit of a workout, and maybe it means that the whole notion of getting a workout while playing a video game outside of the VR world isn't dead after all. Street Fighter 2, meanwhile, represents the other side of the spectrum, utilizing a standard gamepad not the joyce and grip, or pretty straightforward control it was one of the few titles on display, that required no explanation whatsoever. In demo gameplay, the whole thing works pretty seamlessly. The heart of the system is the 6.2 inch touchscreen tablet, slip it into the dock and the TV recognizes the signal, after a few seconds, pull it out and it immediately shows up on the device for gameplay. The joy controls, meanwhile, slip easily between the sides of the tablet, and the joys and grip. Gameplay directly on the tablet is a bit unwieldy, as anticipated, 
but it's definitely usable assuming, of course, you're not on, say, a crowded train that's more Super Mario on territory. Multiplayer gaming has long been Nintendo's bread and butter, and that's no expectation here. My Splatoon 2 demo involved 8 people. The Mario Kart gameplay was a bit more intimate, with 2 players grabbing a small joystick, transforming it into a sort of microcontroller. The Switch ultimately has a Herculean task ahead of it. It must simultaneously serve as the company's living room and portable consoles, while making up ground lost to the Wii U arguably its biggest home gaming misfire. Nintendo certainly got all the tools in place here for an incredibly versatile and fun offering. For now, it's a bit of a slow start with only two proprietary titles at launch and lots of questions surrounding its online offerings. A rec I spoke with compared it to the N64 console, that had limited launch titles, but is now remembered fondly. Not exactly the explosive first impression the company was likely hoping to make following the missteps of the Wii U.